back to Unapologetically Woman. This year, we're celebrating phenomenal women all across Kentucky who make no apologies for their perspective or the impact that they are making in the community. Today, we are celebrating Hellaway Shalish. Hellaway is a mom, an entrepreneur who owns two salons and an event parking company. Unapologetically Woman, Hellaway Shalish, that's you. Welcome Thank to the you. show. Thank you so much for having me. We're so excited to have you. So we're just going to dive right in. Let's talk about where you're from and your upbringing. Sure. Um, my mother is Nicaraguan. Um, her, her dad is Palestinian and her mom was Nicaraguan. So she's a 50-50. Um, my dad is 100% Palestinian. So, and I was born in Chicago. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm 75% Palestinian, 25% Nicaraguan. So tell me how your Palestinian and Nicaraguan background shaped you to be who you are. Absolutely. I'm very proud of my upbringing. I'm very proud of my heritage. I'm very proud of my Palestinian Nicaraguan background. I, it makes me diverse. It allows me to understand so many different people. Um, my mother was a Nicaraguan. My father is Palestinian. Um, and I was born in Chicago, which is a, an interesting little mix. Uh, she was here visiting her sister and went into early labor. Oh. Wow. Yes, so we actually moved back to Central America. At the time, my parents were living in Honduras. Um, lived there for about five years. I'm fluent in Spanish because of that, and that helps me tremendously in the business world. And then we, uh, my parents moved, migrated to, uh, to Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, wow. So how old were you when you came to Kentucky? Five years old. Oh, yeah, wow. So I've been here the majority of my life, all my life practically. I consider myself a Lexingtonian. That's what I was going to ask you, if there was a big culture difference and if that actually impacted you. Actually, there wasn't much of a culture difference because my, my uncles were here already. I had a lot of cousins. So when I came here, I just kind of you know, moved in with everybody else. It was difficult learning English in the beginning, um, and we had to take like extra ESL classes, but my mom and my dad just kind of pushed us into school and said, you can do it, get out there, learn the language, play sports, do all that good stuff. And that's so encouraging. Tell me about school. How was that for you? Um, elementary, middle, high school, all were wonderful. High school was probably my favorite time in my life. I was playing soccer. I'm a Tate's Creek Commodore, very proud of that. Commodore. Uh, yes, uh, three of my children actually went to Tate's Creek <laughs> as well, played sports there and did theater. Um, so I, I, at high school, I made some of my dearest and closest friends. Um, I was able to use my diversity and, and feel, make people feel welcome uh, because a lot of people were migrating uh, to America, to Lexington, and some of them at an older age, I think it's more difficult. But oh, yeah. at five, I think it was, it was pretty easy transition. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, tell me about how life after school went. Well, I went to the University of Kentucky. Um, I actually received a computer science degree from there, and now I'm running salons and parking company. <laughs> but um, I, I loved school. Um, had a few close friends from high school with me, a lot of cousins. Uh, the Shalish clan is very large here in Lexington. Um, so most of them were with me. So it, it was a comfortable environment. I, did not cho I chose not to play sports, uh, but rather just focus on my schooling. So talk to me about your path. So how did what you did in school lead you to what you're doing now? What courses did you yeah, take? Isn't that crazy? Did you already know what you wanted to do? I'm interested um, to know. To be honest with you, I really didn't know what I wanted to do in college. I felt like my calling more, more was more for social work. Uh, my brothers and my parents were like, hey, you're really smart on computers. Why don't you try that out? So I went the computer degree uh, route. I worked at a company. I interned for three summers and received a full-time position with them in Texas, of all places. And I went there and lived. Uh, for about a year with my husband. We uh, were apart for about six months, um, got married. We went out there for about a year and we were miserable. We, yeah. we missed our family. We knew we wanted to raise a family uh, and family means everything to us. So we chose to come back. Um, I did some temp jobs because I left a very lucrative computer science degree and couldn't find anything here in town. Mm -hmm. I did some temp work and then my cousin and best friend from college owned a hair salon here in town and they recruited me to manage their salons. So about six years into managing, they offered me to purchase one and like they say, the rest is history. That that's awesome, and that was a great opportunity that your family was able to lead and guide you into opening up your own. Yes. Now, what are some things that you've learned since then from managing to opening up your own salon? Well, one of the things that more than anything else is the people. Mm -hmm. I, I realize that I'm, I do, I feel like I do some social work uh, with my employees, with my uh, clients that come in. Um, I love people. I love uh, making relationships. And more than anything else, I think that, you know, empowering them and being able to tell them, hey, you can do this. In, in the in hair industry, there are a lot of single moms. Uh, there are a lot of uh, moms that are not guided and men as well. Um, so I felt like I could be that mom for them. I'm just a little bit older than they are. Uh, so through the years, I've just empowered them and told them, 
you can do this. You can do whatever you want in life. Let's focus on your career and what it's going to take to meet the goals that you want. Right. And you have that experience from, you know, having that social work background mm -hmm. and then going into hair salon. And that wasn't really a direct path. That's kind of like, you know, right. a curvy path. And yes. that's OK, yeah. you know, for women to do that. Mm -hmm. So you don't only own two salons. You also own an event parking company, yes. so tell me about that. <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, years ago, I think eight or nine years ago, um, I was working in, with Smiley Pete doing their Crave Food and Music Festival. Yeah. I was recruited by my sister because she was one of the managers to help coordinate it, and they need help, needed help with parking. So I said, I, I'm sure I can coordinate that, you know, tell people where to park. I didn't have to drive the cars. I had to find a lot of volunteers. I didn't realize how many volunteers it took to run such a huge festival. Um, and it, it went really well. And after that first year, it was the year that Breeders' Cup was here. They called me and said that I was referred to them for a parking and if I could do Breeders' Cup parking. And wow. I was shocked. I was wow. like, well, I don't have a company. And they're <laughs> like, well, we'd be happy to get a bid. Just send it to us. And this was like a month before Breeders' Cup. So I had to put it together very quickly. Come to find out, Smiley Pete was the one that referred me. Wow. <laughs> you must have done a really good job. I guess so. <laughs> uh, yes, because we're going into, well, we've had our 10th year, and I've been parking for them for nine years. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so, yes, um, they, uh, I put it together. We did the Breeders' Cup thing, and then I started looking around, realized there was nothing le to, similar to that in Lexington. Um, so I went ahead and researched it, started my own company, and it's been great. Do a lot of different events. Now, because I was founded on by doing a charitable event, uh, I've always donated 10% of my proceeds to charitable events and if it's a major charitable event that I can help out with um, I usually make a donation back to them or I just uh, for Crave I don't charge for parking we just get a lot of volunteers and we have fun doing it and see I don't even think you realize this but that's more social work too because I think what so. you do with that is you still are involved with charitable organizations. Mm -hmm. I saw that one of the charitable organizations was Greenhouse 17. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about that and why that's Absolutely. important to you? Yes, they're near and dear to my heart. Uh, many, many years ago, um, I had a friend of mine that was uh, abused by her husband. Mm -hmm. um, it was very scary for her. She had a young child. And so with that, I reached out to them. Um, we had always done things with them, formerly Bluegrass Domestic Violence. Mm -hmm. I did that through my former salon. Um, and so I felt like they did, they saved her life. They really did save her life. And um, they do such great work. I'm close friends with Darlene Thomas and uh, Diane Fleet. They're yes. my besties. Um, and so any opportunity I get, I helped coordinate Luna Fest um, to raise money for them. Um, I believe Smiley Pete has given nearly $100,000 through our parking efforts at Crave to wow. Greenhouse 17. Yeah. Um, so they're just, um, I just love them. I just love the people. I've toured the farm before. I love their, their guidance that they're giving young women mm -hmm. um, to help them to realize there's life beyond abuse. Uh, you can get out of those situations and more importantly the farm you know they taught them how to be entrepreneurs you know what it takes to make a product because I'm all about business I'm all yeah. about making a business making money and so uh, so I'm very proud of everything that they've accomplished for the years I love that I love that and you are so involved in charitable organizations that you received an award yes can you tell me about that yeah. the piece in Kentucky yes a few years ago and I was totally shocked it was at Crave I'm wearing my yellow vest all sweaty and gross and Darlene calls me up to the stage and says that this is an award that I was nominated for and won and I was I, I, I teared up I mean I loved it I thought that was so sweet um, but it's you know it's what I like to do uh, anytime that I can put a smile on somebody's face either a co-worker or somebody that is in need uh, my family that I'm, it's a good day that's amazing. You. So you're involved in charitable organizations, you're running all of these businesses, but I bet the most important job that you have is mom. Mom, Tell absolutely. me about that. Tell me about your kiddos and all the things. Well, let me tell you, I was raised by an incredible mother and father. Um, my mom worked seven days a week, ran wow. a small business. Um, you know, we've been at the, at the bottom, working hard. My brothers all worked in the family business. Um, in between, um, my, my sister, my youngest sister is eight years younger than I, so I practically raised her. I was changing diapers, making dinner, doing all those stuff at home because my mom was working. Uh, but she would come home every evening and check on her homework, check and see how we did, um, ask about our sports, ask about everything just to turn around and do it again the next day. Um, and we had a lot of family support. I've got an aunt um, that helps us here when we came to America. We didn't speak English very well, helped connect us with doctors and pediatricians and sporting events. And so that was um, 
she is my inspiration. She's my hero, if you will. She's yeah. a strong worker. Finally got her to retire, I think it's 60, 70 years old, 71 years old. Yeah, she took forever to retire. Um, and so with that, I decided these are the things that I want to do for my children. I want to make sure that they get all the opportunities to enjoy life, to get a good education. Um, and my daughters, I have two beautiful daughters. I always tell them, there is nothing you cannot do. There's nothing you cannot do. You are powerful. Mm -hmm. You're smart. You are beautiful beautiful and don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. Uh, my boys already know that. They're, they're, they're already strong. They're right. very strong. We're a very confident family and I'm, I'm very proud of them for that. So you have four kiddos. Yes. How is it that you can juggle having four kiddos, have two salons, have your business, being involved in charitable sure. organizations? How do you do that? Well, let me tell you, the first salon is when I had the younger kiddos. Now my youngest is 19 at the University of Kentucky. My oldest is 20, uh, 28, working in Yes, working in um, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and I have a daughter that's married in Cleveland. I'm hoping to have little grandbabies soon, uh, God willing. And the, um, it, it's not so difficult. But back then, I had family support. I had a lot. My sister was grown up, so it was payback time. You know, I help raise you. You can help me with my kids. I have cousins that were incredible, would pick them up from soccer and what have you. And my team, my team at the salon is, is something else. Uh, we're family oriented. Our motto is welcome to the family with our guests that come in through the door and the employees that we hire. Um, and so they know that if I need something for my family, I'm out of there and I would do the same for them. Wow. And so family is really important. That's your support system. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you take care of you? How would you have self-care and practice self-care for you? Because you do so Ooh. much for other people. Yeah, that's, that's a hard one. Um, you know, I, I have a motto, the more I do, the better I am. Oh. Um, I like to spread myself out. I want you know, women and men to know that you don't have to just stick to one thing. Right. Um, I love multitasking. Do I sometimes forget things? Yes, because I have so many things to do. Uh, but really, my relaxation is seeing the success of my children. Um, my husband is a very hard worker as well. Uh, my mom lives with us. She loves to garden, so she gets me out to do some gardening. Um, I used to be in photography uh, because I took all these great pictures of my kids, but when they became teenagers, they're like, <laughs> no pictures, mom, no pictures. And then we, of course, migrated to the mobile phones. So um, I just, you know, going to work and being at home, remodeling, painting, doing all those things, that's my relaxation. Wow. <laughs> so helping is still yes. what gives you the energy and yes. gives you the peace. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, what piece of advice would you give those that look up to you, maybe women at your salon, people who look at you and say, wow, I want to do what she's doing? I tell them that the sky's the limit. Don't ever limit yourself. Don't ever think, well, my mom told me not to do this, or my teacher told me this. They, they said I wouldn't, wasn't smart enough. Don't ever think. Tell that story to yourself every day in the mirror. I am wonderful. I am powerful. I can do anything in life. Um, and raise your children to be like that. Because if you don't, then the, there's a generational gap there. Um, I would tell them that, you know, surround themselves with a great support system. Um, I, every chance I get, I give them advice, uh, solicited or not, uh, when I see that there's something that they can do better. And um, they, they like that. I enjoy I enjoy empowering them and to understand that there's, there's no limit in life. It's That's up right. to you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being on our show. Oh, we thank love you for having, having you. you. My pleasure. Thank you. You heard Hellaway. The sky is the limit. Catch us next time on Unapologetically Woman.